Today we're going to look at a Vim plugin that'll let you reveal your git commit messages directly within Vim. Now, if you've only ever worked on a code base by yourself, you might be saying, okay, well, what exactly is the point of this? The point of this, I would say, is when you're working in a team. So let's say you're working on a code base with, I don't know, three or four other people. It doesn't really matter how many people there are, it doesn't really matter what the code base is. And let's say someone commits a change to the code base which breaks everything. But when that person commits it, say everyone else on the team also commits some changes. So how would you actually go about finding where this change was made? You could obviously go back and look at all the commits and say, okay, well, this commit changed this file, this file, and this file, and it changed this line, this line, and this line. Okay, the next one did this and this. Or you could go and harass your team members and say, okay, did you make this change? Did you make this change? Or what if there was an easier way to do it? What if there was a way to just look directly at your code base and say, okay, this line here is broken. Who changed this line? And that's what today's plugin is going to be doing. So this is a plugin by the name of Git Messenger, which, as I said before, will let you reveal commit messages under your cursor. Before we get to anything else, let's just have a look at how to install it. And luckily for me, I'm using Vimblog, so I can just copy directly what's from the GitHub page. If you're using something like dayin.vim, or minpack, you can also use the example here as well. Now, generally I don't see these plugin managers show up. Usually it's something like pathogen or how to do it manually, but I guess it is nice to see some other plugin managers get some love as well. So because I'm using NeoVim, I'm going to modify my NeoVim config. If you're using regular Vim, obviously use your regular Vim config, so your .vimrc. So if you're on Vimplug, go down to your plug block. If you're on anything else, I'm sure you probably know how to use that plugin manager. And in here, what we're going to do is just paste this line in right here, which I've already done, and then you're going to run plug install. And once you've done that, you'll have your plugin actually installed. So let's just have a look at what this plugin actually does. So because I don't really have anything better to use, I'm just going to use the ST code base. It doesn't really matter what you use though, the plugin's going to work the exact same way. So ST.C, this file right here. Okay, so what we can do now is run git messenger and this will open up a little floating window. I think it works a little bit differently in regular Vim and older versions of NeoVim, but it should still work. I don't know what the minimum requirement for Vim is. So NeoVim is 0.4 or later for floating windows. I don't know what you need for regular Vim though. So check when regular Vim got floating windows. I, I don't know when that was. Someone who uses regular Vim can tell you in the comment section. Now that I've run this, it brings up this little window which shows me the commit history. So this is the zeroth commit that made this change. So that means it's the newest change to this line. It shows the commit hash. It showed who did it, when, and then their commit message. But maybe this isn't the only change that happened to this line. Maybe there are some other changes. So if we run a git messenger again, what will happen now is it'll actually move our cursor into this block. I'll explain in a moment why you can't just move down to that, but we'll get to that in just a second. So now that we're in here, if we press O, this will actually take us back through our commit history. So this was the previous change that happened to this line, and this was the change that happened before that. So as with the first one, it shows the commit hash, the author, the date, and the commit message. If you're in a well-structured repo, hopefully the commit message is meaningful. If you've looked at any of my code bases, you'll probably realize that I'm very bad at doing commit messages. So most of them are things like updated NeoVim config, updated NeoVim config, added plugin to NeoVim config. Mine are generally not very good. If you're on a professional code base though, I would hope that it's better. You might not have much luck. I've had some really bad luck in the past. So if we press capital O, that'll go in the other direction. Now, if you're in this window, if you try to move your cursor, it's gonna basically keep you stuck in this window. So there has to be a way to quit out of it. To quit out of this window, you can press Q. Now, one thing I did want to mention is why we can't just move the cursor down into that window. So if we bring up that git messenger again, what it's going to do is if we move our cursor, basically it's going to get rid of the floating window. You can change that behavior and I'll show you that in just a moment, but by default, when you move your cursor, it's basically going to get rid of the window, which I think is the better behavior just because I generally don't want to see the message for too long. Now this plugin adds one more command. So if we just run git messenger again, as we see, that will actually open up the Git Messenger window. But if we want to close it, obviously we can just move the cursor. But if you make it so when you move the cursor, it doesn't close the window, there needs to be another way to close it. So if we just run Git Messenger close, 
that will close the window. So as I said, that's sort of the only situation you're going to be using it. Every other situation, it's just generally easier to move the cursor. Or if you're inside the window, you can just press Q at that point. But typing out Git Messenger takes way too long. What you're going to want to do is bind it to a key press. And luckily for us, there are some default key bindings. So by default, it's set to leader GM. So in my case, that is space GM. So if we just run that now, space GM, that will open up the git commit message window. Now, I think that takes way too long to write. So instead of doing that, what I'd rather do is just bind it to control G. Now you could bind it to whatever you want and I'll show you that in just a moment, but I like it on control G. Let's just have a look at configuring this plugin. So I've just got one line in here in my NeoVim config, or if you're using regular Vim, use your .vimrc. So my one line in here is no remap, so non-recursive map on control G. So if you don't know how to do a control mapping in Vim, basically you use a less than and a greater than sign. And then inside of that, you have C dash what you want to bind alongside of it. If you want to do alt, you'll do A dash something. So in my case, I'm doing C dash G. So that's control G. And basically what it's running is exactly what we wrote out before. So colon, git messenger, and then I'm pressing the enter key and that basically will run the command. So if you didn't know how Vim mappings work, they're pretty straightforward like that. Now there's another way we can invoke the plugin as well. If we go further down on here, we look for plug this right here. So the other way you can invoke it is by running plug and then the plugin function. I generally just find it easier to write out the actual command name, but yes, you can also do the mapping like this as well. Depends on how you prefer to work. If you're also like me and you don't like the default mappings, what you'd want to do is set this right here to v true. So I'm going to do that right now. Basically, what we're going to do is go let this value right here equals v colon true. Now, obviously, make sure you spell it correctly or it's not going to work. And if we just quit out of this one right here and we bring it back open, if we try to run leader GM now, basically, it tries to invoke my GoYo plugin because there's nothing else on leader G. So obviously, if you don't have GoYo there, it's not going to invoke the GoYo plugin. But yeah, that, that is now working as we would expect. Now, this isn't the only thing we can configure, though. So if we go a bit further down, we'll see some variables. Now, the first one in here is for closing when you move the cursor. I prefer it to do that, but if you don't want the window to close when you do that, then just set this over to v false, basically doing the thing that we just did before. Now, the next one actually is kind of interesting. This is git messenger include diffs. So in the floating window, it'll actually include the diff. Now, generally, it's not a good idea to include this because a lot of the time the diff will be massive, but let's just try it out. Obviously, depending on how much you commit, it's going to change the size of it. So git underscore messenger. I should have just copied this. I don't know why I didn't do that. And if we just set that to current, so obviously put it as a string. If you don't make it a string, then it won't work. Save that one and go back over here. Quit out of this, bring that back open. And now if we just run our binding, as we can see, we can now see the diff. Now, in this case, it's a pretty big diff because it looks like they wrote most of this file in just one commit, which is great. But yeah, there's, there's tons in here. Obviously, a lot of commit messages will be way smaller. Some will be bigger. Really depends on how your code base sort of works. So I don't typically like including that because it's a bit too much information. If I want to see the diff, I can just go and diff the file separately. Generally, if you're going to be using something like this, it's to just check when something was added and who added it. So you can also include all. I'm going to assume all will include, yeah, okay, all includes every single diff. So if it's a massive code base that has been going for a while, that could be a lot of changes, especially if it's a part of the code base that frequently gets modified. Now, the next one is git messenger git command. So by default, it's going to use git. If git is not in your path, then you have to actually specify the path to it. If you're on any sensibly configured Linux distro, it should be in your path. If it's not, though, I wouldn't recommend fixing it like this. I would recommend actually fixing git. The next one we have is git messenger no default mapping. So we already went over that one. I like it being set to true. I didn't have it in there before for the sake of the video, though. And the rest of these variables aren't too interesting. So these two right here are for changing the pop-up window size. I wouldn't recommend touching these because leaving them at the default value means it'll be resized as it needs to be resized. This one here, I'm not really sure what it does. So go check it out for yourself. I just leave most of these settings as the default values. If you want to change them, then they are here to be changed. 
Now, you might have noticed that my theme actually does highlight the window properly, so if we just run that again, it's actually fitting within my current theme. If it doesn't do that, however, come check out the GitHub page, which does a pretty good explanation of how to change the highlighting on everything that's involved in this window. So, all of this stuff here will basically show you how to do it. So I'm not going to go into that in this video, I've done previous videos on highlighting. And then there's also an explanation of how to change the bindings inside that pop-up window. So that window is actually a special type of buffer, and because of that, you can say, okay, I only want these bindings to activate when I'm inside of this buffer, and this basically shows you how to do that. If for whatever reason this plugin doesn't work, it is configured to work with health checks, so you can check if you have everything installed that will make this plugin work properly. I didn't have any problem with it whatsoever, that might be a NeoVim thing, if you're on regular Vim, maybe it's going to be a problem, but I didn't run into anything like that when I was on NeoVim, so that's my experience at least. At least on a newer version of NeoVim. If you are on an older version, you might have some troubles, but I think anything after, I think it was 0.4 or something like that, will work perfectly fine. So I think that's pretty much everything I want to talk about for this plugin. If you want to come check it out for yourself, there'll be links to all of that down below. But before I go, I just want to thank my patrons. So a special thank you to Joachim, Nathan, Andrew, P. Dottie, Road, Tony, Donald, O.P. Larry, and Zilva. If you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear I use in this channel, or just anything else you want, I'll get a small kickback for it. Also remember to go check out my podcast, Tech Over Tea, that is available on YouTube and Library. I believe by the time this video goes up, my episode with Brian Jenks should be out, so go check that out, that was really fun. We planned to do like an hour and a half, it nearly went for three hours. I had a lot of fun, he had a lot of fun, hopefully you guys enjoyed as well. Also remember to go subscribe to this channel and ding the little bell icon down below, and remember to leave a comment and smash the like button. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.